Hello, New Hope. Pastor Gary here. We want to first of all thank the Lord for watching over each and every one of us. We pray God's best for you. We pray for uh, your health and the health of those that you love. And we just ask for him to send his angels to watch over you and protect you. Well, uh, this morning, I want to do a little devotional on something that I think is extremely important for all of us. And so I want what I want to talk to you about this morning is what do you think the single most important trait is that a parent or grandparent should possess regarding child rearing? Now, some time back, uh, Hillary Clinton wrote a book entitled It Takes a Village to describe what it takes to raise a child. And she had, uh, she had a chunk of that right. It does take a village. It takes all of us together raising children. But what do you think? What do you think are the biggest traits, perhaps the most important trait? Uh, several things come to mind, and this certainly is not an exhaustive list. It's just a very short list for illustrative purposes. But um, how about loving them unconditionally? I think that's an awesome thing to do. And the older I get, uh, the more I have learned to love my kids and my grandkids, and I appreciate them more and more every day. So loving them unconditionally. How about being their best friend? My son-in-law, when he was raising his kids, uh, was a friend to them. He played with them, he loved with them, he roughhoused with them, he taught them, he, uh, he did all the right things. I thought he was a phenomenal father. And uh, so he was a best friend. Those kids would rather be with their dad than anybody else. And I think that's a super trait. Uh, but maybe being their best friend isn't, isn't the top thing. How about providing for their needs and their wants? Kids have lots of wants. Um, they, think they think their needs and wants are one and the same thing. And we tend to we tend to get them too much and give them too much. But what about that, responding to their needs and wants? How about discipline? Discipline is very important. Uh, we are to train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he's old, he'll not depart from it. So discipline is definitely something we should ponder and think about. How about providing for their education? Over the years, Grandma and Grandpa have dropped coins in a piggy bank, and the coins went toward the purchase of the college books for our grandkids. And one has graduated from Iowa State. The other two are still attending up there. And uh, the needs are great. It's very expensive to get an education. So that's a priority, certainly. Um, a very important trait that every parent or grandparent should uh, should uh, possess regarding that child rearing. So yes to all, all those are very, very important things. But this morning, I'd like to just briefly look at one important thing, and that's spiritual training, specifically uh, teaching your child or your grandchild about the Word of God. So we're going to look at Bible training just a little bit this morning. And... Um, I guess uh, to start that process, I want to talk to you just briefly about my favorite movie. My favorite movie of all time is Fiddler on the Roof. And if you've seen the movie, you already know one of the first songs in the movie uh, is about the learning process for a Hebrew child, a Jewish child. And the song begins, at three, I went to Hebrew school. And then step by step, they went through a process where they are trained in a, a vocation. They're trained to read their uh, Hebrew scriptures. Uh, plus, they're trained to read the, the, the uh, scriptures and language of the land where they're being raised. So, um, the idea of the scriptures 
and studying the scriptures gripped me a little bit. I began to think about it and the importance of studying God's word. And a couple of three passages came to mind, and I want to read uh, them and then glean just a, a, a simple thought for each of us this morning concerning studying God's word. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, uh, Moses is teaching Israel what God told him to teach. And he says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in your heart. You know, that's where teaching begins, is the parent, whether mom or dad, or perhaps you're a single parent trying to raise your children, but the word needs to start first in your heart. And then the next step is then disseminate those truths to your children. So these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently. Diligently is uh, it's a very key word there. Uh, down south when we lived in Texas, they used to say, act like you mean it. And that's kind of a act like you mean it moment when it comes to the word of God. We need to teach them diligently to our children. We can't just rely on the church. We can't just rely on the Sunday school to teach our kids. This is a daily walk, as you'll see as we read the next few words. Thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when you liest down, and when you rise up, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. If you know anything about Judaism, uh, most Jewish people will have a um, a decorative box that they will place on the doorpost, one of the jams of their front door. Uh, some Orthodox Jews have have these little ornate boxes, uh, even uh, from room to room. So if you go from um, a living room down a hallway into a bedroom, the bedroom might have one. They're called mezuzah, and a mezuzah is just simply means the, the doorpost. But uh, what they have done is they've taken a portion of Scripture. This portion of Scripture is uh, used a lot there. It's called the Shema. In Hebrew, uh, Shema means hear. So hear, O Israel. Shema, O Israel. The Lord our God is one God. So they were required to teach their kids when they were up, when they were laying down, when they're walking in the way, when they're in the house sitting. So it was a constant thing. Um, and teaching and interjecting uh, different things into the subject so it would be interesting for the kids to learn. But it's one way of teaching the scriptures. My thoughts went from that portion of scripture in the Old Testament to the New Testament. And in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15, Paul's writing to Timothy, his son in the faith, and he says something like this. He said, uh, Timothy, from a child you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise unto salvation. I looked that word up, uh, from a child, and that literally means, from a child, it means either in the uh, embryo state, still in the womb, unborn, or a baby. So from, from being an unborn child uh, all the way up through uh, adulthood, they are taught the word of God. Um, Paul, in writing to the Romans, said, what advantage then has the Jew? And it's a rhetorical question that he answers in the next phrase. He said, much in every way, because unto them were given the oracles of God. So our ex exhortation to you this morning, and uh, whenever you view this, is 
let's, uh, let's consider our role as parents or grandparents or aunts or uncles uh, and do what we can to try to, to love every child into the kingdom and teach every child concerning the things of God. That's my heart. Now, one more very, very good benefit from all of this is that, and, and I see the wisdom of God in this, the statistics will tell you if you want to retain most of what you learn, the very best way to do that is to study it, research it, and then teach it to someone else or immediately put it into practice. You get a, a, a 90% return on your time if you do that. That's one reason why teachers seem to know a lot. They're doing a lot of research and then they will teach. Um, mistakes, yeah, we all make mistakes. We all mess up. But um, teaching somebody else will help sear that word in our heart. Last thought is this. In Psalm 119, and Pastor Jeff talked about this in a sermon a number of weeks ago. In Psalm 119 and verse 11, I learned as a child, and it says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. The Hebrew word that's translated in our English Bible, hid, is hidden treasure. So what do you treasure most in life? I, I pray for you today that you're treasuring God's word, that you're hiding and treasuring that word so it cannot be stolen from you. You take your most important valuables and hide them in a place where a thief can't steal them. And a thief cannot come and steal what's been sown in your heart. So uh, with that, God's blessing on all of you. We love you. Uh, any kind of a need, if, if uh, you need to contact any of us, please call the church offices or call any of us pastors. Our numbers are available. God bless you. And God go with you today in, the, in Jesus' name. Amen.